this is a part 4 video of Polytechnic Lecturer in Electronics, previous year question discussions. We are going to see some more questions in this video. The first question is, you will be seeing the questions on board. In a 100% amplitude modulated signal, the power in the lower sideband is, assume carrier power to be 100 watts and modulation system to be SSBAC, that is single sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, so here we need to find what? We need to find the power on USB, P USB we need to find, right? What all things are being given? PC is equal to 100 watts. Then it is a 100 percentage modulation system means here modulation index mu is equal to 100 by 100 that is 1 okay so mu is equal to 1 we need to find p usb okay we'll just forget about that the system is ssb sc because we don't need all those things for uh, answering this question we just need to know that for finding the power on either side bands the equation is p usb is equal to p lsb is equal to pc mu square by 4 okay so actually we need to find in this question the power on lower side band not p usb we actually need to find plsb okay that is we need to find the power in lower side band means we need to actually find plsb and the equation is pc mu square by 4 okay so we'll write it once again plsb equal to pc is 100 100 into mu is 1 by 4 okay so that is the equation and the answer coming will be 25 watts. So the answer from the options is option C. Okay, so I hope you understood this concept. Again, we have done a video on amplitude modulation. In that, I have explained all the power equations, bandwidth equations, all the main equations also. Please do watch that video. It is in the analog communication playlist. Okay, so the first question, correct answer is option C. Moving on to the second question. So, if you are preparing for any type of these competitive examinations, my uh, suggestion is that you should do maximum previous year questions, okay, so that you will get the standard of questions. Next question. Hamming codes are used for error detection and correction. If the minimum Hamming distance is M, then the number of errors correctable is dash equal to 2M equal to M less than M by 2 greater than M. Okay, here the question is from Hamming codes. Again, there is, there is a separate playlist for ITC. In that, we have discussed all the major codes. Hamming codes also, there is a separate video. Okay, how to uh, generate Hamming codes, how the error correction is done, decoding, all those things I have explained. Okay, now the question is, how many number of errors can be correctable if the minimum Hamming distance is M? The equation is, or the relation is, it will be less than M by 2. Okay. So, if M is the minimum Hamming distance, number of errors correctable, let it be T. T is equal to less than M by 2. Okay. So, that is the answer. Correct answer is again option C for the second question. Moving on to the third question. So, these type of a lot of theory questions mainly connected with the important concepts from electronics will be asked in all competitive examination not just polytechnic lecturer but all competitive examinations will deal with these type of concepts okay third question is the field frequency of hd tv is dash a 15 b 60 c 30 d 120 correct answer is option B, 60 hertz will be the field frequency of HD TV. Okay, so this question is from the TV session. So I was actually receiving a lot of requests to do the preparation of TV. So if you are interested in watching the notes or the lectures from TV session, please do mention in the comment section. Okay, we'll be doing that video. Okay, so here correct answer for the field frequency is option B, which is 60. Okay. Next question, this is the fourth question. Okay, seventh, uh, sorry, fourth question is bootstrap sweep circuit generally employs dash A, C amplifier, B, emitter follower, C, C, B amplifier, D, tuned amplifier. Okay, 
Correct answer is it is actually using common collector and the common collector is also called as emitter follower. Okay. So the bootstrap sweep circuit is employing a common collector circuit and it is also called as emitter follower. So the correct answer is option B. So talking about a bootstrap sweep generator, it is actually a time based generator. Okay, It is generally used for generating of a time. That is it is a time based generator and whose output is fed back to the input through a feedback. Okay, I have included the image for the same. You can see this is a bootstrap uh, sweep circuit. Okay, so we have also seen that uh, while discussing the CRO, there is a time base we need to generate respective to the voltages, right? So in order to generate these type of time bases, we also use a bootstrap signal or a bootstrap circuit, not a signal. Okay, so it is a bootstrap circuit and in that we use a common collector configuration and it is also called as emitter follower. So you should be knowing that emitter follower is also called as common collector or the other way it is the common collector which we call as emitter follower. Okay, moving on to the next question which is the fifth question. Okay, so the fifth question is a very simple question. Fifth question. Okay, fifth question is asking the unit of resistivity. I'll read out the question. Resistivity is usually expressed in terms of dash A, ohm per, mm, per coulomb, no, MOH, no, C, ohm meter, yeah, that is the correct answer. Then D, ohm per centimeter square, no, that is also not right. Now, how will you find out the unit? R is equal to rho L by A, right? From this, you can write rho equal to R A by L, right? Now, what is R? Its unit is O. Then A is area. So, we'll call it as meter square by meter. Now, it will be ohm meter, right? So, the unit is ohm meter. Now, what is the, uh, that is which quantity is having a unit of mo? It is conductivity, sorry, conductance. Conductance is having a unit of mo, okay? So, this is ohm meter. I hope it is clear. Now, the question is fifth question and its correct answer is option C, ohm meter. Okay. Sixth question. The sixth question is, the microwave tube that uses buncher and catcher cavities is dash A, magnetron, B, clistron, C, reflex clistron, D, traveling wave tube. Correct answer is B, clistron. We have done a video on clistron, two cavity clistron. Okay, so the clistron is having two cavities. There is a buncher cavity and then there is a catcher cavity. Okay, the detailed explanation I have done a separate video. Please to watch that in the microwave playlist. Okay. So, you will be feeding the signal here. There is an electron beam passing through these two cavities which will help in the amplification of the signal. So, this is the microwave input signal. The output you will be taking from here and the signal, the process here happening is velocity modulation. Okay. So, that is the uh, case happening and the correct answer is clistron, two cavity clistron. This is a buncher cavity. This is the catcher cavity. Okay. I'll write it here for you. First cavity is a buncher, which is also called input cavity. Output cavity is catcher cavity. Okay. So, that is the sixth question. Correct answer is option B, which is clustron. Now, moving on to the seventh question. Okay. Seventh question is, okay. The negative resistance of a tunnel diode occurs when the bias voltage is dash. Again, we have done a separate video on tunnel diode. All the important concepts and equations are being discussed in that video. It is in the analog electronics playlist. Okay. Now, when we'll get the negative resistance. So, while discussing the cara of the tunnel diode, I have explained like this. So, this is a the cara will look like. So, from uh, the memory that I have explained in that video, I could remember that this is the cara. So, this cara is explaining that the the voltage is going high and it is going down and likewise. This is called the peak voltage and this is called the valley voltage. Okay. We'll read out the question first. Okay. So, the negative resistance of 
the tunnel diode occurs when the bias voltage is dash a between peak and valley voltage b above the valley voltage c below the peak voltage d in the reverse direction so the correct answer is a between the peak and valley voltage so while i have uh, i mean while i was saying this that this is a cara and this is the the two points this point is called the valley voltage we'll call it as vv this is vp vp is the peak voltage okay so this is a voltage axis this is a current axis what will happen here there is a peak happening and then there is a drop in the cara and it will be coming at a voltage which is a valley at the point which is a valley voltage means the current is dropping here okay so in this point you can see that there is a drop in the cara and this region is actually corresponding to the negative resistance region okay i have explained in very detail in that video okay please do watch that video on tunnel diode it is a quick revision video okay so you won't take too much time in watching the video but you will get all the concepts okay i'll uh, give the link in description box okay so this point where there is a drop happening in the cara it is called the negative resistance region and it is between the peak and the valley voltage is correct answer is option a for the seventh question okay moving on to the eighth question so the eighth question okay so the eighth question is a theory question in a rc differentiator the condition for differentiation is a rc very much greater than 0.160 b rc less than 0.160 c rc greater than t by 0.16 d rc less than t by 0.16 correct answer is option b for a differentiator to work that this is a condition you should be knowing these are theory concepts okay rc is less than 0.16 one six time period okay so the rc components which we are using its product should be less than the 0.16 time period for the differentiator to work properly okay this is a condition for differentiation so correct answer is option b okay now moving on to the next question ninth question okay so the ninth question is the main advantage of cmos is its a low power consumption b high power rating c small signal operation d fast switching capability correct answer is cmos is actually the main advantage of using a cmos is they are having very lower power consumption this is a very important question i have seen in multiple question papers of various different examinations actually okay so we actually go for cmos logic or cmos constructions because it is low power consuming circuits okay complementary circuits are low power consuming okay correct answer is option a cmos is low power consuming so that is the main advantage of having cmos next next question which is the 10th question okay so the 10th question is the space charge region contains charge that are dash a mostly majority carriers b mostly minority carriers c fixed donor and acceptor acceptor ions then d mobile donor and acceptor ions okay so in the space charge region there are only ions okay and they are also fixed so the fixed donor and acceptor ions will be present in the space charge region okay so in semiconductors when we dope semiconductors we know that there are donor ions and acceptor ions and in the space charge region we will have only fixed donor and acceptor ions okay they will be fixed and they will be immobile not mobile okay correct answer is option c
So if you don't know where is a space charge region present, so the space charge region will be actually present at the at the junction of two semiconductors. Consider that there is a P type and N type semiconductor joined together. There will be an immobile region formed, right? So this char charge region is called space charge region, and we know that in that region there is only immobile ions, right? So that region is actually covered with immobile ions okay and this immobile ions are present in the space charge region no so there is no mobile ions so here there will be negative ions present and here there will be positive ions right so in the pn junction video i have explained how this uh, depletion region or the space charge region is actually happening so just know that in the space charge region there will be only immobile or fixed ions okay so the correct answer is option c fixed donor and acceptor ions will be present in this space charge region so many people will not be uh, familiar with this term called space charge region so it is also called depletion region or the immobile region in your pn junction when it is combined okay so the correct answer is option c fixed donor and acceptor ions okay so these are the 10 questions which i have included in this video i'm really hoping that you found the video useful the questions i've tried to take from various areas and various topics so if it was useful please to give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching